come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday. Whether you're ready for it or not, whether we're ready for it or I don't not, think because Colin's ready for it. No. Yeah, no, 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 we're, all just... we're, we're easing into it this week. <laughs> okay. Wow, I think okay. we're easing out of it. <laughs> That's what it feels like um, easing out of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join us, won't you? Please. Let's yeah. disassociate together, guys. <laughs> next uh, 30 right, seconds okay. of dead air. Mm, yeah. For the next hour. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, in our uh, quest to conquer the galaxy and all its known realms, uh, we need your help with that. And please go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the internet radio superstars. Ali. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Sean, 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 Sean. What did we watch tonight? We watched Paul Verhoeven's Oscar nominated Hollow Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> for effects. What? It's got to be for effects, right? Or editing or something. Well, it wasn't for script. Yeah. Uh, yes. It no, was for, it was not. It was for special effects. It lost to Gladiator. Really? Yeah. V- visual <laughs> yeah. effects. Visual really? effects. Really? Because yeah. okay. well, Gladiator, you can't see them. Right. 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 Although oh, you can see them. Go back yeah, and watch you, Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. Really? I haven't rewatched Gladiator in. It's I've, again. It's, I don't think it's crazy. Years, but I've, I think I've seen a, that movie a lot. Yeah. I think there's some yeah. animals in there. You're just like, well, that's CG. Yeah. But and, the, and there's obviously, like tigers and stuff, and they look pretty good. Right. And they the had time. to like rebuild the arena yeah. and everything. Yeah, the yeah. Coliseum. Yeah. So, you know, they rebuilt the Coliseum. It's, it's, yeah. the Coliseum. it's yeah. pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay. You said what well, year this was from? 2000. 2000. Okay. 2000. 2000. Paul Verhoeven is coming off of Starship Troopers from 1997. This would be his last American film. I can't imagine why. Well, I think uh, I read uh, an interview with him, and he said that um, you know Paul Verhoeven is an artiste, and oh. so he has is, things is, is to say saying? in in movies. And uh, he said that his other movies felt like him, but he said even watching Hollow Man, it felt like anyone else could have made this movie. There's other directors who could have made the movie, and mm-hmm. it would have turned out exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess voice, I was, His voice did not shine. Yes, I, I, but I, I guess that's a question I, don't I think had he's wrong. tonight. Did you get, did it feel like a Paul Verhoeven movie? At times. Sometimes. At times. Yeah. What, what about it made it feel like a Paul it, Verhoeven the ex- movie? The extremity. His movies are usually pretty extreme when yeah. they commit to something. Yeah, as far as like... Violence uh, and, that, even, you know. Yeah, it gets surprising at yeah. some points. But the violence, um, there is a certain... Um, uh, what to say seediness to it maybe? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little sleazy areas. yeah it's a little grimy mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's kind of a little um i don't know how would you uh, is that what we know paul verhoeven for is yeah. like he is a, a grimy sci-fi gritty, <laughs> is he a sleazy filmmaker <laughs> kind of sleazy movies i mean made basic instinct he but, makes pretty exploited, exploited yeah definitely exploited movies yeah, yeah. if there's yeah. an element to it well, you know whether it's violence or nudity yeah. or what have you he will exploit it mm-hmm. yeah his n- latest ones i confess i haven't seen i did see like black box people, i black, think was black, black book people liked that right like that. i didn't see yeah. that mm. But even that had a scene of, uh, I don't know. Exploitation? No, it was like <laughs> humiliation that went like, like Jesus Christ. Wasn't you know, Benedetta very extreme? I, that the, the ads pitched it that way, yeah. which is kind of, I guess, why you want to see it, but I never actually did you know, mm. uh, follow through. Um, but it, prior to coming to America, he made a bunch of Dutch movies that I think were um, with Rutger Hauer that were mm. well-received. I never saw Spetters, Soldier of Orange, and then eventually he came here with like RoboCop, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Total Recall. And- yeah, did those big you know, Hollywood science fiction mm-hmm. movies that uh, topped uh, his career with the Showgirls. You're saying that this <laughs> This was before Showgirls? It's after Showgirls. After yeah, Showgirls? After, yeah. Really? Oh, wow. No, that's a sleazy movie. It's that's a, really a sleazy, sleazy movie. Yeah. That's he's so, leaning into it. But yeah. then I feel the writer, that that's like a Joe Esterhouse movie. So basic mm-hmm. instinct right, and, right. and, and mm-hmm. Showgirls with Joe Esterhouse. Um, okay, so... Um, well, you mentioned the writer. The writer of this movie. There's three of them, yeah? Well, um, I don't think there's one. Oh, okay. Who wrote this movie? Andrew Marlowe. Do we know Andrew Marlowe? You know Andrew Marlowe. He hasn't done a lot, but what he has done, as far as writing for film, he has done Air Force One. Oh, okay. From 1997. Okay, okay. End of Days. Oh, wow. Ah. And this movie. Wow, okay. Uh, TV, he's done, uh, he was a writer on 
a writer and co-executive producer on Castle. Okay. 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 <laughs> so Andrew Marlowe is the guy who had to do all the science research for this movie. Uh, yeah, basically. So we Yikes. can have we have science fights at the end of this yes. movie, which oh, I actually did fight. kind of appreciate There's on this like watch. Battling <laughs> science montages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure he's going to make it to the wall because I don't think Brent ever brought Air Force One. So. Air Force yeah. One. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. He you guys brought Con Air, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. We can't bring <laughs> Air Force One's too good. I know. <laughs> Get off I was my like, that plane. One, that one's never coming here, so he's not going to go on the wall. Yeah. Too bad. Two out of three is pretty good. Yeah. Well, we, the can Hollow watch, we can always watch a couple episodes of Castle. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Just to bring uh, Andrew Wa- uh, Marlowe onto the wall. Mm. No. That's, that's Sorry, Na- Andrew. That's Nathan Fillion, right? Yeah. I mean, I do like yeah. him. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is an Invisible Man movie. Tis. Is. Not your dad's Invisible Man no. movie. No. That's very no. much the attitude of this movie. Is. Right. We're my, bringing it. It's a new era. era. Yeah. A new yeah. era of Invisible Man. Before I came here, my brother asked, what movie are you watching today? And I said, Hollow Man. And he was really confused because he thought it was Invisible Man. I was like, no, no, it no, is, no, no, but it isn't. I was like, no, you're you're thinking of the good one that yeah. just came out in the last few years. I'm like, this is right, Hollow Man. Right. This is it has a, a creepy title, The Hollow Man. Well, and also, yeah. it's, I mean, it speaks to the character yeah. of Sebastian Kane himself. Yep. Yeah. I looked it up because I was like, I, I'm a big fan of Apocalypse Now. And at the end, uh, Kurtz is reading The Hollow Men. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a, it's a mm-hmm. poem, I think, by T.S. T.S. Eliot? I was going to say T.S. Eliot, but I'm not positive. But yeah, so that's where the title comes from. It's a good, creepy title. A mm-hmm. Hollow Man. He's mm-hmm. an Invisible yeah. Man. And this is Columbia Pictures. They don't owe the rights to the Invisible Man. That's right. Universal, right? So they were doing all of the uh, like Universal Horror Monsters. But doing them, they're a version. Bram Stoker's right. Dracula, right. Wolf, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And they got their Invisible Man movie, I they guess, uh, with this one. Um, the era, so, like, I remember uh, there was a ma- uh, there was a movie called The Man Who Wasn't There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone? Yeah. With Steve Gutenberg. Mm-hmm. It yeah. was a comedy thriller, poli- like a comedy thriller. Mm-hmm. And he was the Invisible Man. I think we need to do this on the freak show. <laughs> I've thought about bringing yeah. it up. I, ha- I have it. Yeah, because I love in Steve Gutenberg. In 3D. Oh, vague 3D. Recollections oh my God. Of this movie. I fucking love Steve Gutenberg, so I thought about Goot. bringing it. <laughs> I love the Goots. But it was, uh, you know, like going to do the, so the, the, the technology at that time was the 80s 3D revival. Mm-hmm. So they did the Invisible Man effects, but mm. in 3D. You cool. know, you could see it, right? Interesting. So then in... When was um, memoirs, memoirs of an Invisible Man, the John say, Carpenter? Yeah, I gotta look mm-hmm. down. Because that I think was the first one from the CG era, right? Where you could have, uh, you could actually digitally remove the actor and like see through right. the holes in his mask. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. 1992. 1992. Was, there was a lot of digital digital in that movie, but it's also like the if you go back and look at it, the practical effects that they do in that movie are also like huge and spectacular. At one point, half the office building disappears. Yeah, and they built I an office building that. that's just yeah. got like it makes it look like panels have just vanished off mm-hmm. of it. It's pretty yeah. cool. The movie I watched, went back and watched it recently. Not the best, but the so, visual effects still stunning. I guess the irony to me then is the most recent version of the Invisible Man is like fairly low tech in its special effects. Yeah, yeah. extremely. Mm-hmm. Where it seems like Invisible Man movies were building up to this one. Like mm-hmm. this is the one with the biggest budget, the most expensive, extravagant, and like, oh my God, blow your mind right. uh, visual yeah. effects, right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. once you get that idea of like, let's see what the, what would the transformation of an Invisible Man look like? Mm-hmm. How do we do it? Instead of just, you know, uh, a fading between a character who took a, a, a serum of some sort and then he just fades <laughs> and he's gone, and they're just like, oh, he's invisible. Mm-hmm. Now we have the technology and the money to do something. By, like, layers. And yep. it's, um, you actually see, like, the, ve- you see the Medicaid, the serum moving through all of his veins, and then Still slowly. very cool. It's because the camera's able to, like, track it, and it does seem like, you know, the, because of motion tracking capabilities, it's like, wow, that thing looks like it's actually in the set with mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. the folks. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um. It's so spectacular that they do it three times yeah. in the movie, <laughs> which I was kind of like, okay, we get it. You know, are you bringing something more to this? I think they're just really proud of it. Right. Yeah. 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 Look what we can do. But yeah. also, this I, this is where I first start to have problems with this movie because we see footage of the characters watching the procedure on the gorilla where they bring the gorilla back. 
on a TV and in that footage it's completely practical effects and looks completely different yeah. than what we saw. Yeah. That is what a the hell? different gorilla. That is a melting gorilla. That is a gorilla they tried to bring back and is melting on the table. So oh, that is okay. a different procedure than the one we witnessed earlier. But it's but it the uh, but the procedure is done in not at all in the CG effect that we just saw. No, and I think yeah. because Why it's is this be on a monitor that yeah. can get away with it more. I don't know. It was a weird choice because it looked so different. Yeah. It did. Look it cool. looked out yeah, of place with the rest of the like movie. The yeah. Failed experiment yeah. or right. whatever that we did before. But we are we do we do see the effect three times. Uh once on a gorilla, twice mm-hmm. on Kevin Bacon mm-hmm. himself. Kevin Bacon's in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. The star. Mm-hmm. The star. Well, I think it technically it's Elizabeth Shue. But yes. Did she, did she get first billing? She gets she first did. billing and I think did she, she got yeah. okay. oh, wow. I think she was first in the credits at the end too. Is this yeah. her first action movie? No. Well, action Adventures movie? in Bacon. Yeah. I mean well, I mean this scale Adventures this is like I guess, you know, I'm trying to think back of, because I don't know if, that I've seen this movie in a very long time, and it seems like it's a combination of like a horror movie, a science fiction movie, and like a big scale, big budget Hollywood. Are you saying that Karate Kid's not action? Action movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying That's that true. Back to the Future is not action? Yeah. I will say that. Back not. to the it's same not. with stunts. I not like that. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Stunt work. You yeah. know, people hanging from uh, elevators and shafts mm-hmm. that are burning as the elevator car itself is careening down the... All right. Yeah. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, I feel like. With the this Saint? Oh, uh, The Saint, yeah. Uh, Not really an action movie. It's more uh, of a thriller. It's like a there's, Bondian yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. yeah. But it's an action movie. Um, action movie yeah. I mean, Blind Justice looks pretty action y. It's a TV movie from 1994. I probably watched there it then. <laughs> it's an so, action movie from, oh, the, or a TV a, movie from the 90s. Yeah. I think it's sexy too, because just based on the like poster and then that first picture. Oh, wait, hold on. That first picture that popped up. Oh, okay. I was like, the other one was like, yeah, they're in a baseball field. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, what are these uh, two yeah, guys standing uh, in a baseball field? Right. <laughs> Sean's like, that's not, is that sexy, Sean? It's like, no, it was the previous picture. <laughs> <laughs> it was Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> so Kevin Bacon is the Invisible Man. In this movie, he is, I mean, I guess in every Invisible Man movie, the Invisible Man is the monster right, he's yeah. of the movie. He's total trash. But um, he doesn't need to become invisible to be a monster. He's so, already This trash. is really important. Yeah. to point out this for this is story very I think important that he's an asshole from, from the, the get go and the I, yeah. I will give it a little bit of leeway on the fact that at this time in pop culture we were doing the Dr. House thing of I'm really good at this one specific thing so I don't have to be polite to anybody Yeah, yeah. and that is this character's attitude and I get that 100%. it was like in the water at the time but it's still too much for a movie yeah. this it like it's this character is just too much. Well, I suppose because I've never seen. I don't think the tragedy of the Invisible Man. You know, yeah. that's the Wolf Man. I yeah. guess is the person who's you know got the, the affliction. They transform. But you and, can't even say even he's Frank driven Stein. mad in this movie no, because well, he starts off that way. Okay, so that <laughs> I guess is my thing with this, and I didn't know if if it was supposed to be like you're seeing like a sympathetic person who goes you know like you know goes crazy, no. and then it's like. But he's like an asshole, like from right the from start. the jump. No, he's yeah. E- yeah. E- egomaniacal. Yeah, because they keep on. What are the recurring? They can't, well, it's because everybody around him keeps calling him a fucking genius. Like you're a genius. Like that's the half of the the, the beginning of this movie. You're a genius. And you're a genius. How you're many genius. times? That doesn't mean you can either... also be a rapist. No, yeah. I'm not saying. <laughs> that's no, what I'm, saying. I'm not saying it is. That's what I'm saying though. It's the Doctor House thing. I'm yeah. so good at this. You all have to bow down to me, yeah. and I don't owe anybody anything because I'm blessing you all by existing. Yeah. Well, there's literally constant... calling himself God. Literally yeah, himself that's God. A, there's constant yeah. allusions to him being God. They think you know. I mean, that's even like at the end of the movie movie like how you know you're not god you know all this other yeah. stuff um so the position is that like being invisible grants you godlike powers because mm-hmm. you're a phantom and you can be a ghost and you can move the holy spirit yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you can have super strength too apparently apparently yeah and a healing factor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of a lot of things kind of come along with this all right so so he is a scientist and she's a scientist mm-hmm. um the two of them have had a relationship in the past. Naturally. Um, which is very... Close uh, nights. Uh, the the fire from the beaker sparkling in her eye. I mean, <laughs> you're stuck in this bunker, for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, that's right. Yeah. They work in a bunker that's a big 90s, uh, late 90s era Hollywood yes. uh, set. Yep. And it's a pretty cool set. This could they put a lot of money into yeah. this, it feels like. It d- yeah. yeah, it does mm-hmm. feel like a... a Massively budgeted movie. It's, it's like ninety five million dollars. Fifty million went to special effects. And Good god, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you see it all. Yeah, so. yeah. I know it's on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Josh Brolin's also Josh in this Brolin. movie. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. Um, because you now he's like the the third uh, character in this love triangle. Yes. Right? Yeah, he's the clean cut nice guy, and he's currently dating Elizabeth Shue. Yeah. yeah. In secret. So. Oh, he knows. <laughs> So Kevin Bacon's character, like I guess when um, when Sean proposed bringing the movie yeah. last week, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Holly and Michaela had a very strong reaction. We were appalled, yes. yeah, very appalled. <laughs> appalled. appalled, appalled by the movie. Appalled. Yes, yeah, okay. because because sexual assault is a a plot yeah. in this movie. Literally, the first night that he's invisible, yeah. he sexually assaults. One of his coworkers. He, and then he goes, I counted, he sexually assaulted every woman he worked with in every this movie. Every single yeah. one. Every single one. Every single one. And his neighbor. Like, it, it's yeah, ridiculous. He, yeah, it's like the first thing he goes neighbor. to. Yeah. yeah. It's just, okay. okay, if the guy is literally in his robe, naked, on his way to going to become invisible, and is telling a very long-winded rape joke, maybe this isn't the guy to make invisible. Maybe. That's, I had that Like, he's literally walking thought. up to get the juice put in telling yeah. this rape joke. Yeah. What's, what's the joke, McKay? It's, it's a gross, uh, it's, it's Wonder a Justice Woman, League Justice joke. League yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> It's a gross it's a ju- yeah, you've seen right. the movie, you remember joke. it. Yeah. yeah. A Justice League joke. Yeah. That's stupid. That's yeah, but was it. the invisible man in the Justice League? No. That's so the joke makes no fucking sense. Oh, wait, no. was there a Fantastic Four guy who could go to, or, I was gonna say, but do he have... said it the invisible man in he, his joke. Right, yeah. he did. Like yeah. I was waiting on like, shouldn't it be a superhero who can go yeah, invisible? Did like, we have yeah. one of those? Yeah. Right. Like why is maybe we didn't, and that's why he's like, it's gotta be the invisible man. He's just writing gross fan fiction now at this point. And he and he like acts like they should be laughing. I'm like, well, you threw in a new figure. Like, yeah. of course they're not laughing. You just made up sense. a superhero. <laughs> yeah, that makes no it's sense. It's a bad joke, and it doesn't make sense. So like, stupid. But I agree with you. One of them, either Josh Brolin or Elizabeth, yeah. should have been like, you know what? <laughs> Let's put a pin in this. Yeah. <laughs> because that was a very rapey joke. Yeah, it's and I don't like, trust him. You know that all the psychological testing you have to go through to be an astronaut. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't that apply? I know that yeah. the whole point of the movie is that like he's God and he doesn't he doesn't follow rules, but like right. that's why rules exist. Right. Know? Like they all just collectively are like, you know, he he goes by his own rules and he's not a good guy. Like yeah. they collectively. Yeah, they all say know this. it. There's because there's a they bunch of people on this uh, yeah. on the staff of this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not just the three of them. There's like right. they have a whole staff. Oh yeah, yeah. Greg Grunberg's in this. Yeah, Joey Slotnick. Joey yep. Slotnick's in this. <laughs> and um, Kim Dickey. Um, Kim Dickey. Kim Dickey's mm-hmm. in this. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And um, so, yeah, it's I mean, it's basically I guess my memory of the movie, you know, because it had been a while. I'm like, well, what do you remember about that? You know, I remember the climax. I remember bits and pieces about the plot. And I remember the monkey disappearing in the three big scenes. But yeah. it does kind of on this watch. You're like, OK, this is the invisible sexual predator yes. movie. <laughs> and it's established like right off the bat. I think when we first meet his character. Um, he's Sebastian leering at his neighbor. King. Yeah. He's leering right. at his neighbor across the way, mm-hmm. you know, as she's like getting home from work and taking her, her shirt mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. And then she closes the blinds. And, and he's and like, so, damn it, when yeah. she closes the blinds, yeah. like it. It's a problem for so him. Yeah. It's setting up. And then, so I was watching like the structure of the movie then. It's like, it's setting that up and foreshadowing like right from the get go. So mm-hmm. you're like, okay, it's an invisible man movie. And then at some point, I mean, I've seen other invisible men movies where like at some point somebody goes into the girl's locker room, mm-hmm. you know, right. and that's usually as far as it goes. Paul Verhoeven's like, all right, we're going to go. Even further, yeah. This, uh, is him, that. this is why I said CD earlier. It's him exploring kind of ju- mm-hmm. among, maybe only those elements of this whole thing. Yeah, and uh, like at one point after he's been invisible and he like goes out in the the city, even his coworkers like, did you do anything? Did you like scare anybody? And then he implies that like there was a girl who's like, oh, what happened? And I'm like, these people are way too on board with this. Yeah, yeah. Well, just that like, specifically that one guy. I think yeah. the Greg, Greg he's the yeah. the dude bro. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah, man. Yeah, like, looking at awesome. porn at work yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, he nothing else idolizes the you know the the. the I guess temperament, the personality of Dr. Kane and someone. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The other people, I don't think, are as much on board with it as as he is, but they don't seem to come to. He's like, sweet, man. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Basically, his attitude for it. But they're not coming to the, like, you know, like, well, you were out there. Well, we'll, I guess we'll we'll get to that. But it builds to the, you know, like, if it sets up at the very, very beginning, 
you know, there's this woman across the way. It builds up to that moment where he visits her. And then after that, it becomes how do we stop him for like the last half of the movie, yeah. right? Mm. That's basically the build. But yeah, but the problem with Chekhov's rape in there. The, yeah. yeah, seriously. But the problem starts so much earlier because, I mean, they really do know that he's a shit person. Mm -hmm. Let's and then, make the shittiest person we know yeah, invisible. Like, he, they already know he's a shit person. And then later on, they're like, is your brain turning? I'm like, what do you mean turning? He's always been an asshole. Hole. Like, yeah, exactly. This is so stupid. And that's the story gets this fucked up because when the gorilla Isabel is is invisible and she bites um Josh, Josh, Brolin. Josh Brolin on the yeah. hand, um the, he says something like, "Oh, she's been gone so long, it's affecting her brain." Yeah. And so like this making you think that yeah, the procedure is going to turn him into an asshole, but no, he always right. there is no transformation because he always was an asshole. You know, yeah. as I'm thinking back on that I think both of the, so there's there's two pieces of dialogue. Mm -hmm. That one is the setup mm -hmm. and the payoff is somebody says like, you know, he's been, you know, it might be starting to affect his brain and mm -hmm. both of those lines could have been delivered in in post production yep. as an addition to the movie. Yep. And I'm like, well, why would you do that? It's like, does that excuse his behavior later I like think the audiences to couldn't it. well not excuse it. Yeah explain it like well, I, that's i think they're trying to but it doesn't work no. yeah i mean i mean i would assume audiences are smart enough to watch that and just go like no this guy's an asshole to begin with yeah. the idea that mm -hmm. power totally corrupts him and right. you know he's just able to work out his worst impulses yeah. because he he can't be held responsible he can't be seen for like, it every time he's alone with elizabeth shoe he's like on top of her trying to like force himself on her. right yeah. like from the beginning of the movie yep. it's every every female every character yep. mm -hmm. um I mean, and there's, I guess the relationship that she has with Josh Brolin, there's always sexual tension between like many of the people in the cast, it yeah. seems like. So that is a theme that Verhoeven is trying to, uh, uh, you know, work on. But again, I think it's like leading up to that, mm -hmm. the moment. Um, so they've discovered the secret of invisibility. Yes. That turned, was the easy part. Yeah. They've turned many animals invisible. It's it's reversion. Is that what they call it? Yeah. It's reversion. Yeah. Getting them back. That is yeah. not worked so right. far. They've melted quite a few animals. And okay, so the movie starts with they're turning, trying to turn Isabel back. They finally, he finally got it stabilized after clicking around and whatever the software is to stable. He's this, building this molecules. science software where you which, click I molecules. Mean, which this is also another clue right off the bat because it's just like. He puts in the thing and then unstable pops yeah. up and yeah. you can kind of see his reflection <laughs> in the thing. You're just I, like, love ah. the, I love the box. So it's like unstable, unstable. or stable. And I'm like, it, that's an error message. Yeah. It right. would just say error. Yeah. I love, it's like I, perfectly around his face in the yeah, reflection. Though. Yeah, it's great. I, I love um, somebody similar did. There was like a um, some movie. There was a small um, behind the scenes thing about the guy who creates the computer interfaces you see. Oh in my movies. god, I want to watch like that. the fake ones. You're just like, yeah. that's not real. It's yeah. like the guy who creates them for each thing and everything. That's so it's cool. Pretty interesting yeah. to have that job. Yeah, I, know. I create the fake computer interfaces. Is it like right. one guy? He's so good at it that they <laughs> yeah. keep on be, calling yeah. him up. Like you can come up with a, a, a operating system. That's uh, yeah. But this monkey. This I'm sorry. This gorilla has a heart attack when it's coming back. Yep. It and it to me, it's so comedic seeing this half invisible gor uh, gorilla get uh, like the the, the paddles. paddles. paddles yeah. It's the they animated this like some some animators spent hundreds of thousands yeah. of hours yeah. <laughs> making a gorilla have half a uh, half invisible heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> like it's and this is just the opening of the movie. Like we see this type of scene mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah, I know. I it's wonder impressive. if it would have been. It, it's like it's it's jaw dropping. Yeah, it truly is. But. Like, would it have been better if they only saved it, worked up to it, and did it once? I mean, the fact that you see it so many times. This is 2000, Colin. Yeah, and they're we like, have, we have We have this. the money. Yeah. We mm -hmm. have all the lights. <laughs> We're going to show you everything. I mean, I'm pretty a fascinated by it every time it happens. It's, oh, okay. So yeah. you, you like, want to see yeah. more. Okay. Oh, no, I'm it's, good with seeing it every time. It's yeah. really not the most offensive part. No, it's, okay. it might be the most interesting part of the movie, yeah, honestly. It truly is. Because yeah. you, you look for it. You're just like, because we've seen bad special effects movies and everything. And so you're just looking for the seams and everything. Yeah. And while it doesn't look like exactly photorealistic, mm -hmm. they're doing a fucking good job. It's like the just, detail. It's yeah. like, the detail is great. The distance of when they- this looks amazing. Right. Yeah. For 2000, yeah. the detail when they push on where the body should be yeah. versus mm -hmm. what's below it and everything. Yeah. Like, 
even looking at stuff later on where you're just looking through one side of his mask throughout the through the other eye hole. Right. Like it, everything they did it. Up yeah, perfect. it looks really good. Yeah, I really liked good. when he's sitting at the computer and it's straight back through his eye holes and you see the back of the head mask. Yeah. The curve and everything it moves looks, with the eye yeah. tracking. It's and they did like light like he stepped from hard light to soft yeah. light and like the the back <laughs> the yeah. uh, what you could see through the eye holes changed lighting and I'm like that there's yeah, a lot impressive. to appreciate in yeah. the technical aspect. Lost yeah, out the gladiator. Yeah. yeah, lost the gladiator. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, <laughs> and I really, I don't think gorillas had heart attacks in that movie. So I would no. guarantee. This one should have won. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but they did have CGI tigers that looked really good. Yeah, really good. But yeah. we didn't have like computer generated Russell Crowe peen. Yeah, did in this. Did, I'm oh, yeah. glad that Verhoeven at least is an equal opportunity yeah. exploiter with that kind of stuff. There's, for you, Michaela. There is a lot at of least that. you get yeah. dong. There's, <laughs> Kevin Bacon goes the distance, you get man. Bacon His dong. things flop. I mean, and, but this, it's, it's always Kevin Bacon. Dong. You know what I'm saying? Like it's oh, always. So now like, you're bored. You get it. Now you're bored. <laughs> okay. Sean, say, old like, news. <laughs> it's full, full frontal. Let's call Bacon. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the second time we've seen it on this podcast. Who do we call? Bacon. <laughs> we did wild things. Not Somebody that get long bacon. Ago. bacon. I would yeah. love to be his agent. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody find bacon. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, I guess if you think about it, like as the invisible, you know, I mean, you're only invisible when you're naked. So yeah. he's running around naked the whole yeah. way through Freezing. this movie. Yeah, around he's bouncing around. around. Yeah. But there's all yeah. those like moments where like he gets the water on him, or he's underwater, or, thrashing on the bed, even or, or thrashing yeah. on the bed, like when he's like half muscly skeleton. Yeah. Like there's always the pain. <laughs> he's flopping around always there, flopping yeah. around, yeah. and it. It's it's enjoyable. Yeah. And the, thir- the, th- the thermal vision one was probably yeah, actual yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Right. Yeah. Um, great. So they um, a great transformation process, especially when it gets down to just the skeleton. Oh my god! Which we <laughs> all decided while watching this that we would be perfectly fine if he was just a skeleton. Because it felt like it was going to stop there for a it, second yeah, and get yeah. stuck because it lingered too long on the skeleton. It, it truly did, and, and they're it, just like, "Oh, it is disappearing." But uh, it, yeah, when they pulled away, though, there was a second where I felt like you could see it shift from being a CGI skeleton to a physical skeleton on a uh, bed, like a prop, <laughs> like prop store skeleton. It was right when she goes to pull the tube and says, "I think he's in shock." Like it moves a little bit in a way you're like you could see the cut between the two. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I'm sure they had something there. Yeah, that yeah. Maybe they didn't cover yeah. up too much. But, but man, say, saying that I think he's in shock when it's just a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, skeleton's in shock. <laughs> like how so, can you tell? <laughs> well, he um, he does go invisible. Um, and then uh, I think the experiment, or no, before he go, before he goes invisible, he, they have discovered how to bring, like, how to reverse the effect, right? So they, they do it on the gorilla, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the gorilla comes back. They're mm-hmm. they're phasing in and out of uh, right. whatever the the visual universe or something. They say at a presentation of the Pentagon because yeah. they're employed by the Take government. It to the committee, and they work in this underground uh, bunker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's um, so he ends up. They are sorry. They end up. Uh, Kevin Bacon lies to the committee. Yes, mm-hmm. and says that they haven't quite. They haven't quite perfected yet, but they're even close. Though they have, yeah. Even though they've yeah. they've cracked it. Yeah. That makes a good point. They'll take it away if they figure out that they, he's not know. wrong. But, so, you know. And this yeah. is his big act of hubris because he's, he, he's like, you know, I'm God. I can do whatever I want. It's my project. And so he's going to move into the human trials, mm-hmm. then, right? On yeah. himself. And yeah. so away and he goes. Um, Elizabeth Shue and Josh Brolin are there with him and they keep it quiet so that they can move on with the next part of the trial without telling the committee. Mm. Complicity. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what you got going on there. Um, I was never quite sure. I mean, I guess like, you know, so they could keep their funding or whatever, but I was never quite sure why they were going along with it as long as they did. Right. I, I think it's a situation where he's just like, it, it's it's kind of like being under like a cult leader. Like they're a sociopath and they're doing all these things you don't agree with, but some, for some reason you go along with it mm-hmm. just because you're kind of brainwashed into the situation. Like they've been underground doing this experiment for like 11 years or however long it's been. Like at this point, I feel like they're probably in it enough and manipulated enough by this guy to just go along with it. Right. And they also, I'm pretty sure that they can't, they think they, they can't, um, do this without him. Yeah. yeah. And so they're definitely. kind of, they're definitely just, they're giving him a lot of leeway in yeah. there. Like, well, if he's gone, unfortunately, like that's it. And I suppose he's the boss of so the funding gets cut off and all that other stuff. But, you know, um, 
so they do it. They they but they haven't told the the rest of the team. Right. I guess so the rest right. of the team doesn't know that they haven't got approval to do what they're going to mm-hmm. do and so then they do administer the formula to him and render him invisible. Uh the, the he's supposed to be invisible for 3 days and so okay, they're going to monitor him, mm-hmm. you know. And on I think uh so I mean like what <laughs> and on minute 29 rape like, yeah, well, it goes out. Yeah. He, Seriously, that eventually, like he, um, they try to bring him back, and it doesn't right. work. Mm-hmm. But but the build up, like the very first thing that I think he does, right, is he does go to uh, Kim Dickey while she's yeah. sleeping. The first thing he does is yeah. assault his coworker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his coworker that he was previously like harassing and talking shit to, yeah. and saying like, "Why did I even hire you?" So there's also like a power dynamic. Oh, for at sure. Play yes. here because this Cause is she, an employee she, that he um, hates. She tries to undermine him many times yeah. because she's a veterinarian and mm-hmm. she's very much for the animals that are being tested mm-hmm. on. And he's very much, Oh, they're just test subjects. Yeah. Yes. So they've got that, that dynamic where they're always battling over that. Cause, yep. cause okay. But his, his like theory for this project was really out there because they brought the gorilla back and then he immediately wanted to kill it and dissect its brain. I'm like, yeah, bro, you just brought it back. Yeah. Like, let's do some tests and research on what's it. Is its system all fucked up now? Right. How what's, do you come back from that? How's yeah. its personality now that it's back yeah, right. and can, you yeah. know, see itself? And again. that's what his coworkers said. They're like, you're joking, right? Right. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. yeah, I'm joking. As he's cutting a gorilla. Mm, right. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, well, we know this guy is like, you know, yeah, but that's, his priorities right he's like he's he's off um but yeah i guess like that first you know um thing it's it's this escalation right at that point he's she's asleep and so he's basically undressing her while she's asleep Mm -hmm. and then you know sneaking back to his bed before Mm -hmm. you know undressing her and feeling her up yeah yeah. and so it's that kind of escalation of what he can get away with right Mm -hmm. um he then what does he do after that because before he actually goes out like he's fucking around with everybody there i think basically the one girl goes to the bathroom and he definitely watches her pee in the bathroom Yeah, he's and, sitting around while they're all talking yeah. shit about him in the mm-hmm. conference room. He has um, part of the thing that um, will later play into the action movie climax of this movie is they all have infrared goggles that they can put on. So you wouldn't them- know it. <laughs> yeah, seriously, for as much as they get used in this, mm-hmm. so they can watch or the thermal goggles. They can yeah. see, you yeah. know. Um, the heat signature. There's also cameras throughout the throughout mm-hmm. the lab. That thermal have, cameras. Thermal yeah. cameras that are watching, you know, some of their animal subjects that have turned invisible and whatnot. And they do this little dance, because I don't think it's digital. They do this little dance where um, certain characters, when they're on the movie camera, but also on the thermal camera, they have to choreograph their movements in and out of the camera spot oh, to yeah. match with what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like pretty good. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like, we shot on a different later. day, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. But we got to match it up here on set right now. Um, there's a dynamic between um, him, Sebastian, and Elizabeth Shue's character and Josh Brolin's character, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because as you said, they used to date, but like, how do you describe the uh, relationship that they do have? Who just uh, those three? No, well, spe- uh, specifically Kevin Bacon and, and Elizabeth Shue. It's contentious. Yeah, to say yeah. the least. He's say. still harassing and antagonizing yeah. her, and but sometimes she says things in a way that seem flirty. Like right, she's playing it sexy. Yeah, like yeah. when like she, she was putting him role. under, she said something to him that was like really sexy, and it was like it was really weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, at least at the beginning, mm-hmm. I think she's playing it more kind of sexy in the way she's doing it. I don't mm-hmm. know. So there is that interplay between them. It's like, um, it's like they had a relationship, but it ended because he was just a piece of shit, but she never stopped being attracted right, to him. Right, the attraction. Right. She's like, I'm going to yeah. end this because you are a piece of shit, but that doesn't mean it wasn't... A, the, the, the things I was attracted to, I'm still attracted to. Yeah. Yeah, like, she says, she tells Josh Brolin, I think the concept of Sebastian yeah. Kane mm-hmm. is more appealing than mm-hmm. I, than he is, you know? Yeah. But I got the impression they didn't really have a serious relationship. No. Am I wrong? No, I bet no. they uh, there was a lot of uh, sex on science tables because yep. they'd come to some sign... They, they they yep. had a breakthrough and they're just like, oh my God, science. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I guarantee it. I guarantee oh my it. God, science. <laughs> uh, that was the, that was that's what you yell when you climb like, Oh my god, science. How did you know? <laughs> uh, and her and uh John I mean, that's what I do. I don't know. Yeah, I mean what you would, you know. I mean, it's a, um, oh, I love science. That's why they love science so much. Do not let Sean in a museum. <laughs> oh my god. 
Did you see that ball that you touch with your he's, hand and your hair stands on end? He's, he's, he's banned from the Chicago Science <laughs> Nature Museum. Oh, there's sexy netting in the other room. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm slowly getting kicked out of every field museum. Yeah, every single one of them. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, so her and Josh Brolin, um, they are, they they are like they're not going to tell him. Right. That they're dating. No, he yeah, definitely no. would not handle that well. No. No. As the computer no. told us, this man is unstable. And he's <laughs> yeah. your and your, he's your boss. Yeah. yeah. you you have an unstable boss, bad for anybody, but you have an yeah. unstable boss that you also have a personal history with. Right. Yikes. Literally every element of the situation is toxic. Yeah. Every unstable boss that is your ex and you're locked up in a bunker underground together. Right. And he'll probably like, kill your coworker. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you out. might as well hang yourself with that red right. flag. Like, yeah. it's, right. They're all red flags. The fact that they even got along as well as they did. Right. Like seemed Stockholm you know, syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. For science. Um but then and it kind of seems like they're they're like back and forth as kind of a foreplay thing for them too. Yeah. Yeah, oh, but yeah. even though she's dating the other yeah. guy, it's yeah. like sometimes yeah. I was wondering, like, you know, well, I mean, I guess it's like you said, she's still attracted to him in yeah. some in a lot of ways. Yeah. She's um, like molecules. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Protons, um, but I like that, I like that they're microscopes. The, but I like that this like pays off that they are because I guess you know it's like Josh Brolin's character is set up as like he's the um, the foil right for Kevin Bacon because he's also like well I'm a science genius too and I'm gonna mm. figure this thing out mm-hmm. and then, you right. know it's like the two of them but mm-hmm. it really isn't it's like him and Elizabeth Shue she's mm-hmm. the other like true scientist and I think that's why I like that that uh, the the science montage fight that yeah, they have right. going yeah, on in the great. end your brain versus that's my great. brain yeah yeah um so he uh the experiment doesn't work in bringing him back and so then st- uh, stuck for 10 days down there he's like I'm going out. They actually yeah. make him at some point Oh, the mask. Yeah. 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 Which is like the classic invisible man yeah. get up and I it's think it's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm sorry. Like, it, it, the but, more he adds to it the funnier it gets. I mean it truly it is it, it's I think it it rides that line cuz it's also terrifying. Like, yes, but also hilarious. It's both. Oh no, it's it, no, I'm yeah. saying it is definitely hilarious because yeah. at certain points he just looks like an old man with no teeth. Yeah, but yeah. I think the way Kevin Bacon is playing it also makes it hilarious. Yeah, yeah. like for sure. he has the very the like you put- can't tell me what to do, mom attitude when he's in this outfit, like the hood God. up, the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, like I'm going out. Like, like he's, he's very put up much his hood and, like pull yeah. strings real tight. He's like, yes. Ugh. He's very, yeah, he's I'm very leaving. petulant teenager energy when he's in this get up, and that's what makes it funny. The mask looks like Deadpool. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Especially yeah. the, like, the the back texture yeah. of it. Yeah. It very much but the like effect Deadpool. is, like, so great because, I mean, I get, like, if, from a budget standpoint, it's like, well, you're getting to actually put your star in the movie for yeah. a while and you can shoot him. Mm. But even then, you know, you had to have, like, green. Mm-hmm. Eye makeup and probably contacts or something mm-hmm. so they could oh, you know, paint him out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he but he is hell. there, but it looks amazing. It's yep. like mm-hmm. this mask draped over a Kevin Bacon that isn't there. And it there. looks like Kevin Bacon, though. Yeah. That's what's so good. The mask yeah. does yeah. look yeah. like And him. all the digital stuff. It looks yeah. like Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, they scanned his enti- every pore of his body yes. for How long this movie. Do you think they spent like tw- 10 hours just on the peen? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Sir, sir, we have to get it right. Yeah. You remember there was that thing that came out about how much the peen and Watchmen cost because yeah. of how much it was on the screen. Big blue one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was like several million dollars. Uh, yeah. So yeah. we calculate how much right. did it cost yeah. to get that yeah. out there. Yeah. Calculating. Right. Yeah. yeah. We have to calculate how tall is he when he's in Vietnam and <laughs> yeah. how would that thing swing yes. for being that tall? Somebody had to do that math yeah. and figure yeah. out that budget. See, that's the special effects guy. Ah, shit. This is basically like a... So, The Mummy was ni- 1999, wasn't it? That yeah, was the one that kind of gave us... This feels Yeah, okay. Some of the moments right. in technology with this. Okay. Um, not as, not, we'll say not as bad as the Scorpion King Rock, because that looked no. horrible. Oh, if, you know the, if you know that meme. It's so yeah. bad. It's not good, but... It's so bad. Um, He goes... And when he goes out, you know, he goes over to his neighbor's house. Neighbors played by Rona Mitra. Was this like one of her first movies that we do we establish? Because w- while watching it, I was like, what? You know, how come I haven't seen her in a while? Mm-hmm. And I know that at one point she was like, uh, it felt like on the cusp of, you know, being a genre uh, star. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, again, like I said, Underworld, Rise of the Lichens, The Life of David Gale, Doomsday. She did uh, Boston Legal. 
Uh, so, well, I mean, she did, I think, lower budget stuff because Skylines. You guys remember the movie Skylines? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Wait, she was in that, the thing with the blue alien. Yeah, but this was Skylines. Oh, so Skyline. this is the 2020. Oh, the second one. I think it's the third, the third or one? fourth one. <laughs> like, I think Skylines was the remake. Oh, okay. A couple oh, wow. of them. Yeah. Jeez, there's a whole Skylines universe I don't there, even know. Uh, about. There is. I worked with the guy who edited the first one, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, there's a whole thing. Uh, what was the car movie with Jim Caviezel? The car movie where she's stalked by like the guy in the muscle car in the middle of the desert. I'll find it. God damn it. Oh. I don't know this movie. Yeah. Mm-mm. But she had. Uh, so th- I think this is the first time that that I remember like a big budget movie that she was in. But anyway, so she's the neighbor and she he goes over there and attacks her. We're not actually seen. And that's the only reason this character exists, by the way. Yeah. yeah. This character only yeah. exists to get raped and is not in the movie yeah. after that. Yeah. Because I think that is the moment that. Well, see, I don't know. Stuck I would, on you. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! The Farley Brothers movie where <laughs> <laughs> Greg Kinnear and Matt Damon played conjoint twins. That movie was upsettingly funny. <laughs> upsettingly funny. It's got Meryl Streep in it. Like, it's got everybody. <laughs> it's wild. Upsettingly it's funny. funny. It is. It's crazy. It, sh- it shouldn't be as funny as it is. Oh, Highwaymen. <laughs> Highway oh, Highwayman, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. I like that movie. Yeah, see the poster with her getting stalked by the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, is that Jim Caviezel? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Jim Caviezel, yep. There you go. Oh, wait, but, no. Um, of, no. No, no, that, that's the other one. That's oh. with, um, Tom, with um, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson yeah, yeah, and that's a different uh, one. Uh, Kevin Costner. Yeah, that's I like one. that movie. Yeah, you like I don't yeah. know this one. <laughs> no, this was from 2004. Yeah. In, um, so in the movie, like, is this, like, you know, because it's such a focal scene, and I wonder if Paul Verhoeven like made more of it that was cut out. Oh of yeah, there the was mo- a director's cut of this movie in which certain scenes are extended. Um, yeah. This was one of them that was of extended. course the because more scene? to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it because they it's had not too the- much longer, but it is longer. There was a movie called The Entity back in the 80s. The ghost that would rape. Yeah, yeah. where they figured out practical effects to do things, you know. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I was wondering. It was like, okay, is Paul Verhoeven going there? Or did they? I assume they cut it out of the theatrical cut because yeah. it's like people just maybe don't want to see that. You, I, right. I think you, un- <laughs> you, un- <laughs> <laughs> you understand would- enough of based on what we got. Yeah, like, you, you don't, don't need, need to do anymore. anymore. Yeah. No. Is it the moment that you are supposed to like? somehow go like well there's you know he's he's the bad that's guy that's it i mean i that's what i'm saying it's like the whole movie basically says he's the bad guy right from the get exactly. go he's never not the bad guy right there is should it, be a it, little more where he's not the bad guy yeah is it just is this um or any point where he's not the bad is guy? it just at this point then he's irredeemable yeah, you know, it's like yes. yeah. up it's to this bold. point. Yeah. It was yeah, like there will only could... be no redemption arc okay. for this character after this point. But why? Yeah, I feel like there there could have been a moment where he was like, "What have I done? I have to turn things around." But like that doesn't happen. Right. There's never a moment that it's like, "Okay, this guy might be okay." He's mm. never okay. He's no. never good. This it's always it just needs to be recalibrated a little bit. It's a little off because why not just have him be a nice normal dude until he finds out that Josh Brolin and Elizabeth Shue are dating. And then that is what sets him off. And yeah, you, like, yeah, right. It's right you combine there. that with the 10 days of yeah, being invisible. Yeah, I was like, yeah. The fact, yeah. That yeah just... the fact that he's getting that, like, stir crazy by day 10 and he's kind of starting right. to lose. It's not yeah. stir crazy. They have been experimenting on yeah, him this yeah. entire time. Yeah, experimenting on him right. and, like, he's just kind of going crazy. Yes. And well, then that's the final straw. And then straw. that's the yeah. final yeah. straw. That would make sense. The movie does seem to give a lot to the idea of sex with an invisible man. Yeah, because it's brought up later. In again, the dialogue, they yeah. bring it up, and then Elizabeth Shue has a uh, a dream, a nightmare, mm-hmm. um, where we basically get to see some of the practical effect work that that they're that I assume they were intending to do. So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. that does seem to be a focus of the the filmmakers mm-hmm. is like, okay, this is going to be the Sex with the Invisible Man movie. Um, and after that point, then it they realize yeah, this that he, is where you were asking, like, what does it feel like a Verhoeven movie? Yes, yeah, 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 right, yeah. Like, yeah, right here. Yeah. This yeah. is the, the theme <laughs> uh, of the movie. Okay, and then after that point, then the movie shifts into the uh, we have to kill the monster, stop the monster, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, movie um, because they know that he went out, they know that he did something. Yep. Their imaginations don't take them as far as going like he probably did something criminal. No. I mean, they just say like, well, I don't want to think about it. Right. Yeah. But they also they're just like any uh, every moment he's out there, he's not safe. This could also lead to even if he isn't doing anything wrong, this could lead to the shutdown of this whole program. Yeah, it's everything's discovered. gone. Yeah. But yeah. how? 
How is it going to get discovered? I'm sorry, I, not to not to devil's advocate for, no, for you're, Kevin I think Bacon you're here, right. but how is it going to get discovered? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Unless somebody says you something. literally can't fucking see him. Yeah, like yeah. it seems it pretty be... low risk to me. Yeah. So like your chief, and who's, and your who's... chief scientist just disappears and walks off the project or something like that yeah. and never came back and because he got hit by a car or yeah. something like right. that. Yeah, imagine that happened and you're just like, oh, oh. okay, yeah. but if he got hit by a car. Would his blood come out visible or invisible? Because this movie switches logic on that a few times. Invisible. Well, that's because I, I was wondering yeah. even during the the rape thing, because he yeah. talks himself into it. Like, who's going to know? But yeah. I'm like, would they be Ages? able to have yeah. Like, yeah. With genetic the DNA yeah. still, Or is that yeah. invisible? I, I think yeah. it's invisible. Because he pukes earlier and that's and it's invisible. invisible. But yeah. he pisses and we see it. When did this happen? In I the urinal. <laughs> when she's in going this? pee, there was a, she looks at the urinal and you see a pee stream. Do you not? No, the the urinal was running. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. okay. it was I was going to say, I was like, I missed this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because he eats a Twinkie later on, but mm-hmm. unlike uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, right. you don't get to actually yeah. see it go down into his, yeah. Into his stomach. Yeah, I could have used a little more of that. <laughs> like Maybe because they'd already done it in another movie. You and could still do it one. Like, when you have the technology and the budget to do it, like, you do it mm-hmm. once, and then you move on from it, just because it's cool to see something get digested and then go through the body. Mm-hmm. Well, he starts fucking with his co-workers, um, you know, recording a loop of him sleeping uh, so he can wander around and do stuff. Um, which I'm sorry you guys keep saying he's a genius then you shouldn't you have seen this coming that he was going to try and right. figure out a way to a little more you. of an eye on yeah it, yeah if nothing else yeah like uh, you know one of them uh, uh, security foot ankle monitors or something so you're always mm-hmm. right yeah it's like yeah, motion detectors <laughs> okay he stopped walking yeah what do we do now so, yeah something on him like they should have put a chip in him or what have you and yeah because he flies up was was finding out that um that Elizabeth Shue and Josh Brolin are sleeping together, the thing that made him homicidal? Because does he start going homicidal after? No, he kills that dog first for no reason, right? It's the same time. Same time, okay. Like he finds out, and he's pacing back and forth under the thing, and okay. then he immediately kills the dog. Which so implies the then that, that he uh, cared more for her than we were led to believe, right? So it wasn't a casual thing. Mm-hmm. It made it's, me no, competition. I was like, it's not that he cares for no, her. No, it's, it's that somebody else got fucking, her. Yeah, it's that she's fucking someone else. And then yeah. he doesn't have yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, and I, then the it's someone in close side. proximity. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. That's it's what an it, ego okay. thing, because he's oh, like, yeah. what, what has she seen this guy? I'm like, it's Josh Brolin. Yeah, like, it's, it's, right. it's like, <laughs> late 90s Josh Brolin. I'm sorry, dude. Like, yeah. What do you mean, what Look at that clean cut American boy. Right. So Sorry, Kevin Bacon. he's really smart, too. He's really smart, and he's nice and doesn't rape people. What a good guy would yeah. this be a good Idiot. time to mention that we're inducting josh brolin oh, onto the saturday night freak show wall of fame so thanks Ooh. to mf mad the Thank keeper you, of the saturday night freak show wall of fame can you name the three goonies goonies yes, yes. okay yeah. no country for old men was that ever done no, no we never no. did that that's uh, oh no uh way. jonah hex jonah hex oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, you better yeah, remember like jonah hex yeah <laughs> um MF Matt also wants to apologize that uh, Elizabeth Shue has been on the wall ah, yeah, because okay. she was in Back to the Future 1 and 2, yes, which yes. we did. And then she was in Deconstructing Harry, and now she's okay. in The Hollow Man. Okay. Is she in 1? Okay. What? She's not in 1. She's... In oh, that's right. She's not. She's in two and three. Yeah, two and three. But we did two and three. Yeah. Did we do three? We did two and three. Yeah. You did two and three. But she's not in one. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Different we can go back and There's listen. There's a whole thing there. about yeah. that. Yeah. Um. That's right. It's a uh, Jennifer or something. No, her Nick character's Jennifer. Whatever. So Different not movie. now. Yeah. No, no. Brent so, would kill you right now. <laughs> no, no. So um, now they have to stop him, right? Because he keeps going out. And well, they, but they they have decided because he does keep going out. They have decided they're going to tell the higher ups what happened. Finally, reveal that um, we uh, went a step further. We turned him invisible. Now he's escaped. We think he's doing wrong things, and we don't care about. The program at this point, we're going to tell them and they're going to shut it down. And we got to find them. Yep. So, so they go the over to the boss, uh, William, De- the great William Devane, yep. star of Knott's Landing. No, he's been in yep. all a bunch of other stuff. You saw him as the president in, in The Dark Knight Rises. He was in Contact, wasn't he? And Payback, the Mel, payback, Gibson, Mel Gibson movie. Um, so they tell him, but they don't know. The Invisible Man is there mm-hmm. at the house and kills him in his pool in a spectacular special effects sequence. This is cool. It's a cool scene. Very cool, but yeah. it's flawed because they imply that he can now breathe underwater. Yep. He got a good breath before he went in. Yeah, oh, he strangles him. Okay. Yeah, the other guy okay. was struggling and was surprised. It's the way they shoot it. He just seems like a water demon or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he does. But the effect looks really good. I think it looks really cool. They really even does. include 
Water peen. Water peen. Yeah, water there's peen. water peen. Yep. I missed water peen, but oh, I uh, yes, yeah, definitely. I there. mean, ev- I was looking for it every time. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I have to see if they include it every yeah. time. Sure, because they, they that did. special effects artist who had to go yeah. in there and design the whole thing put a lot of words. Yeah, yeah, the peen department on the water peen. Like, yeah. But also, it's like, today? well, <laughs> I feel like the I'd, left nut. <laughs> I feel like I'd be more interested in watching like a making of this movie than the oh, yeah. actual movie because, like, is Kevin Bacon just wearing a full ass green suit thrashing around underwater for this? Like, how are they filming? Actually, this? they had to paint for this one because they had to use a lot of different colors depending on mm-hmm. the environment he was in. He was uh, head to toe black. Oh, that's and, spooky. And oh, my gosh. So he can stand out again uh, in the water. And oh, I mean, that's so terrifying. Every, that's scary. Right? Yeah. That sounds yeah, horrifying. Was it him yeah. or stunt guy? Uh, I think... Uh, the, that one he, probably could have been a stunt they guy. They used him for a lot. I, th- I mean, I'm sure a stunt guy was in there for certain scenes, but they used him for everything they could use him for. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the they distance for this the, movie, man. Yeah, I know. Like, he does, Kevin Bacon took the job because he's like, ah, there's certain scenes I won't have to be on set. I'll just be a voice. Oh, uh, yeah. And then he's like, little did I know that I would be head to toe. full. Like, he had the costume where you have the little white balls on Yeah. He had full green. He had contact lenses he had to wear. Like, it was... He went through the whole thing for this. I think impressive. he knows the exact level this movie's at. I think he knows this movie's kind of a joke, and that's why his performance is what it is. Other people in this movie, I don't think know that. So you say the movie, you th- the movie's a joke. In what way? I think. I mean, it has moments of straight up comedy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I mean, the, even though like over to the top way he's thrashing on the table when he starts transforming is it looks like, like he's possessed. Yeah, and like honestly, I, at first I thought he was messing with them. Yeah, that's what I thought too because yeah. it was so over the top. Yeah, I don't understand why they chose this take because he does. What, ah, I, I I think I feel in my feel, arm, and but yeah. he's doing like, but he's doing that look to her like, like is she he, is she buying it? Yeah. 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 He's like, got that look like out of the side of his eye. With and, just like, and then yeah. all of a sudden he does actually start transforming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's that's a, a choice. It's a weird take that they it's used for It's a really weird that. take. Mm-hmm. And just the dialogue in this movie is ridiculous. Yeah, it's but more yeah, so like right. as we get into the, I mean, I guess I'm going to call it like a standard action movie climax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the end yeah. is like full on. Is it standard? It's like speed. Right, because of this era, right? Hollywood spent like a the shitload shaft. of money yeah, on Yeah, it is like yeah. the standard. He creates bombs. They're like going through an elevator shaft. Yeah. And you're like, that's what Hollywood does. Yeah. It's all, so it's all it's amped yeah. up. And then yeah. the dialogue like, becomes... Like, what What year was uh, Deep Blue Sea? 1999? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This feels like that. Remember that yeah. elevator shaft? Yeah. It's filling with water. And yeah, it's just the thing it's that the you thing. do. Yeah. Yeah. I it's guess. one of those things. That whole, yeah, climbing a ladder uh, action scene. Yeah. It was standard for... Action movies around this time. Yeah. Well, he goes uh, after he kills the the, um, the quicksand of, of <laughs> late nineties. Yeah, he kills the head doctor, and then um, then he just is like, "Well, in order to keep my secret, because I just want to be invisible now, and I'm not going to give this up." He's like going to kill all of his friends, his yep. colleagues who he's worked with for mm-hmm. eleven years, and so he goes back to the research facility, and then. I think they become aware that like, well, because he starts cutting the... the Cut, starts cutting the phone lines. They can't taking, use the elevator, so they can't get out. They're entombed all down their, there. Right, all their access codes have been taken out, yeah. except for his. And it's going to be forever before people find us, and we're down here with the Invisible Man. I mean, that's a creepy idea, right? Yeah. I mean, he's going to stalk yeah, you I'm in the... below ground in a, in a creepy-ass uh, laboratory with the Invisible Man. Yeah. 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 And you kind of get the idea as they, you know, they're like, what? No, he wouldn't do that. And like, oh, my God. And then, I mean, that kind of stuff, I kind of like the idea that, like, these people are like, oh, shit, he's going to, like, try and kill us. Well, yeah. Because yeah. he admits to them that he killed the the general, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then and he's like, you'd be surprised what you can live with when you can't see yourself. I like right, that. You can't see yourself in the mirror. Josh yeah. Brolin's like, do you realize what you're saying? It's like, I think Josh Brolin is realizing what he he's yeah, saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so then there becomes a stock and slash sequence throughout the um, the facility. Yep, they're picking off the group one by one. And yeah. each one of them uses, uh, you know, clever ways to try and see the Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because, God forbid, we just use the thermal goggles. Yeah. Which, there are, <laughs> which are in abundance down here. Well, don't, but, don't forget, he turns the heat up. Yeah. Well, oh, and, no! And the other thing they do to double down on that is they're like, 
um, they're like, oh man, when the thermal uh, footprint is too small, we have to use this computer scanner because the goggles can't see it. And I was like, oh my God, you yeah. are making this shit up. Then and they yeah. have like, along. who knew that the place was outfitted like aliens or something? So they have. Uh, right. they... I love the mo- I love uh, just like red triangle represents you, and we're moving around yeah, a map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this technology. I'm glad we're still having. We didn't get past it. We're in 2000. We're like, we're not quite there. Like yeah. the rest of like, the technology in this movie is like really advanced. Yeah, right. We right. We're turning a, little... a dude invisible. But yeah. just the red triangles. Red yeah. triangles on a map. It's like I saw this in Critters Four. Yeah, like uh, you guys have not advanced beyond that. Yeah. Was uh, Saving Private Ryan was before this, right? The Kim Dickey yeah. uh, like kill Maybe scene right. where she's like, "Please, please don't!" And you know, he mm-hmm. like turns the gun around on her and kills her. Mm-hmm. Kills Greg Grunberg, strangles him. Greg Grunberg, yeah, he gets picked up. Uh, and strangled, but then he gets dropped on like a exposed pipe and just oh, banged gnarly. in the neck yeah. and head, where he's just bleeding. This and is where it, we like, start getting real bloody. Yeah, the, the, sound, effect, the sound effect when his head hit that pipe. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. It was good. Oh. He's going for a brutality yes. that yeah. I think you expect from his movies. Yeah, like the guy from RoboCop made this movie. RoboCop, yes. Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah, like this guy, Total Recall. This guy made this movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh well, Brolin at the end, gets you a, see it. <laughs> yeah. After another character, the guy from Twister gets run through with a mm-hmm. uh, metal shaft. Uh, Josh Brolin gets crowbar. like mm-hmm. crowbarred yeah. in the stomach, and Elizabeth Shue has to reach in there to Ugh. determine that none of his vital <laughs> organs have this is been. This the worst. She, she, she opens the shirt, sees the thing, and she's like, oh, and then she's like, yeah. and she digs her fingers into right? his abdomen, and she's like, he didn't hit any organs. I well, touched every single one of them. Yeah, I think well, fine. Now he has tetanus. Thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, just like, don't lose a nail or a ring in there or something. Jesus. Well, they've been locked in the deep freezer, right? And so yeah. this is where we get, yes, yeah, so the scene that we've talked about the entire way through this movie, the science battle, or, you know, the montage. Mm-hmm. Um, it is science battle montage after everyone's dead at this point. Because yeah. he still stalks... Um, uh, Kim Dickens. I think I said Dickie before. It's Dickens, isn't, isn't it? it? Oh, it could be. I think it's Dickens. I mean, Kim Dickens. Um, but she she went to go get blood for Greg Grunberg. But she's throwing mm-hmm. blood all over the floor. <laughs> yeah. So there's, yeah, there's a scene where she thinks, like, Sebastian's in the room with her, so she's opened up packets of blood and throwing them on the floor. Yeah, but those are cool. It's all like, you know, they're trying to figure out how can you make the Invisible Man visible. They have the yeah. mask. Mm-hmm. They have water. Mm-hmm. They have rain. Yeah. They have smoke. They have blood, you know, mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, him. it's cool because she gets... Extinguisher. Mm-hmm. Fire extinguisher. Fire yeah. extinguisher. He gets... Uh, covered with blood and it just it, it looks real, cool it, it looks look cool. cool it's a real haunting yeah, image because what cool. it sticks to on his face and everything yeah it's good I know mm-hmm. it's like they thought of like all the ways that you could try and they really know. did make a list of like alright yeah. we mm-hmm. have the budget to make an invisible man movie and we can pretty much do any situation you want mm-hmm. what do you want to do and they really figured out a bunch of them that are pretty cool to see some of them not so, and I'm going to say "quote unquote" realistic. I yeah. know this is an Invisible Man movie, but the dude gets roasted later on, and all his burnt flesh <laughs> just falls off. I like that his burnt flesh becomes visible. I was going to say, why? Why does that happen? Yeah, I don't that know. doesn't make sense. Uh, well, I think well, uh, oh, none, none of this is in the movie. I don't think, but certain things keep happening to him that are affecting his physiology. He gets electrocuted later, yeah. and you can see a lot more of his inner body yeah. and everything. That I. I Actually makes more sense maybe to me because than the burnt flesh. Because you're seeing the well, current maybe go through the him. flesh has died, and it's yeah. no longer affected by the serum, and so you can see it, and then it falls off, and then you can't see it anymore. Sure, That's sure. That's a lot of yeah. work, yeah. <laughs> okay, but when he's, wrong. when he's strangling Greg Grunberg, and Josh Brolin comes in to shoot him, and realizes he's shooting too low, because this motherfucker is sitting on Greg Grunberg's shoulders, and no. has... No, he's on, a, he's he's on, on the pole. Okay, I was like, wait, I was like, down, okay. Yeah. I was like, is he sitting on his shoulders? And <laughs> no, he's like, no, but that's Pressing way funnier. That would be way funnier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that I like that, though, because they, they lost him like, on the, the computer. Yeah. They're right. like, oh, yeah. where'd he go? Because yeah. he went up. Yeah. 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 Fucking Gollum at the end of the Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Throw this motherfucker in the mountain, right? dude. My God, he's fucking That's evil. Funny. Yeah. Well, she figures out how to science her way out of the meat locker. He figures out how to um, this scene, everything. It seems like it takes her days to figure out how to get out of this meat <laughs> she locker. She creates an electromagnet to open the door. I thought that was cool. See, it's, no, it's a good idea, it but you're right. It is cool, but they it don't... seems like it takes time to do. Right. They don't cut to make it faster. They're like, no. we're real timing this shit right Yeah, now. yeah. yeah. She's going to science the shit out of this. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we like watch her wrap a cord around yeah. the thing. Like, okay. She know. tests it with a bunch of quarters yep. and screws and they stuff. They want to make yeah. sure you get the idea. Of what's yeah, going you on. know what she's done. Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys felt the same way. 
Mm. I think maybe Sean did because he said something during the movie. But uh, at, at some point, Josh, you know, he's a, the Invisible Man is attacking Elizabeth Shue and Josh Brolin shows up and clocks him. Mm-hmm. And he hits him directly on the head with a fucking crowbar. Yep, a and he's one. like, I'm, yeah. I got to save you for that once. That should be it. And mm-hmm. the, the hero couple are going to go escape. Yep. I know that there's still like the bomb's going to go off yeah. and, right. you know, so there's the still, they have to go. Scene. But then we get that cool scene where he's grabbing the crowbar as he moves through the rain yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. But it seemed like an extension because I think, you know, I think it, it might have been Michaela said during the middle, like how many fake out, you know, deaths are yeah. going to yeah. Because yeah. we have a lot of like, he's dead. He's back. She <laughs> roast. I think it, it started with, she roasted him with a uh, yeah. flamethrower. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is after he has created a face for himself. Oh yeah, he draws on <laughs> eyebrows. He puts eyebrows, on blush. Lips. Lip liner. Yeah. Yeah, I need a Kevin Bacon wig under a baseball yeah. hat. He's yeah, going right. out in the in the yeah. world for good yeah. this time, yep. blowing up everything behind him. Mm-hmm. Yep, but she and roasts him in the elevator. The scene was like two seconds away from having like the Bee Gees play underneath, and I think it's ready. <laughs> right, like, it was so close to right. that. Yeah, he's putting on basically the the uh, it's the Marvel I need to hide look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like sunglasses and a cap. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and a wig. So and a, and a wig, yeah, Kevin Bacon gets, here, but he gets roasted in the scene, and this is really good. Like the the stunt work here, because uh, uh, she's made a um, um, a flamethrower and everything. But him, like uh, the clothes burning off of him, yeah, him trying good. to escape, peeling off the plastic and, and his, his skin, clothes as he's going, like and burning, his skin's yeah. like it's a really good scene. It's, you, uh, I, it's a good scene. You feel kind of the pain in this scene. Like mm-hmm. it's good effect work, good stunt work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's presumed dead then. He's presumed dead after uh, Brolin clocks him. Yeah. And then we have the big. Sequel, big action stunt sequel, which just seemed overdone. It was, but it was like, holy cow! You know, there's a lot of you know going up the ladder, the thing falling, bombs going off, and the you know below. The- Paul, it, Paul, it- Paul, we uh, <laughs> just spoke with the budget department. Yeah. We have ten million dollars left. What do you want to do? Yeah. You want to give it back to the studio? Or what? No, elevator well, shaft. Yes, yeah. I have ideas. <laughs> it just feels out of place with this movie. It the, does. the elevator shaft drama feels like a different type of movie. It does. It, does. it feels yeah. like it an does. Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. movie. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Especially because the elevator gets blown back up. Yeah. Like, I imagine, I can <laughs> see a, uh, an elevator getting destroyed and, you know, cables breaking and it falling and everything, but then an explosion happens and it goes back up, which And then is it comes funny. down again yeah. and then gets, yeah. And uh, finally, we are able to beat the invisible. I'm not even sure how he survived, how he how managed did he get to get there? up there. He I don't know. Right. Any of this up to this point, he shouldn't have. He should be dead. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that was an afterthought that they were like, you know, we can, like you said, we got a little bit more money and we can give you like, like another. We have to do this. Audiences thing. said the ending was too, you know, just like after everything. I don't know. It felt like it came to a, a conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. And then it kept going. Um, it really did. But in then, a big I mean, spectacular ending. Yeah, he tries to uh, again kill Elizabeth Shue, um, but she uh, snaps or uh, grabs the cord that's holding the elevator. I have a hard time imagining this elevator is being held up by this one cord, but whatever. Mm-hmm. This is an Invisible Man movie. Yeah. Um, but she snaps that, grabs onto that, gets taken up as he falls into the pit of fire. But even then, we wrap up the uh, the the sexual predator uh, thing because he is still trying to ki- he kisses her. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. We wrap up the the God uh, complex because she says something to the effect of not God anymore, and mm-hmm. then kicks the brake or the whatever the release, the release cable, yeah. and he falls to his death in the burning fires of hell. He could still be alive for all we know. He oh, goes but from he's heaven not, to hell because there was a sequel and he's not in it. What? There's a sequel, Hollow Man no. Two, Get starring out. Christian Slater and Peter Facinelli. Oh wow! What? <laughs> yeah, Why it's a sequel that or yeah. another Hollow Man movie. I'm like, I is think it- there end up ends up being two Hollow Man in that movie at a certain point because you know, like one guy is just like the only way to beat him is to become him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I will be Hollow Man as well. Oh. A I'm fight sorry. And <laughs> Why are Why we, are we not watching one? this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christian Coming Slater soon. and Peter Fetchner. Why yeah. are we not watching this? I did not check to see how much rape was in it, so I didn't, like, maybe it has more. What does two invisible guys fighting look like, though? That's what I want to know. I mean, like this, but, with, you know, more. <laughs> and that was direct to video, so I can't yeah. imagine that the same uh, visual effects team were recruited. I'm curious. I can't imagine. I, you. I imagine you're see. right, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows? But there's right, a well, Hollow wait, Man 2. Wait, ne- next year we'll watch Hollow Man 2. All right. <laughs> okay. I'll give us some time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um,. That's the movie. Whoa, that came out in 2006? Oh, yeah. That's like more recent than I would have expected. I'm yeah. guessing that this was a big hit on video. Was it a big hit theatrically? I think it was. I think it, was. Uh, it made, I think, like $200 million. Uh, uh, That's a lot. 
total. Yeah, yeah, uh, of a ninety-five million dollars. Yeah, budget. that's a holy fuck. I so mean, this is well. like, yeah, wow. If well, nothing okay. else, it looked interesting. I think it drew people to it. I, I, I think a it did. Would I have think come it did pretty good on video as well. I remember it being a big renter at the time. Hmm. Well, it always came in that two pack with flatliners. So oh, it's yeah. all the man and flatliners. Uh, the DVD two pack. Pictures, yep. uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Hollow okay. liners, flat man. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna review the movie. We're gonna let you know what we thought of it and whether or not you should watch it. By the way, if it is uh, universally uh, acclaimed, then you have to contractually by what by listening to the show, watch it. Or I, I suppose the uh, you released of that obligation if yeah. we if there's disagreement. But yeah. first, True. before we get to that exciting climax to the show. Uh, We're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Where is he? Oh, no. (laughs) I don't see him. Somebody get the fire extinguisher. Somebody just. Somebody burn him right now. Oh, my God. Fire does not stop him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Makes him stronger. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Hollow Man. Jimbo Ice writes in and says, no, please, no. Why are you guys visiting the most (laughs) awkward and uncomfortable material from this era? What's next? Sucker punch? Oh, God. Oh, no. It's a great question. No. It's a great question. Don't look at me. I'm looking at you. You picked it. I would never bring sucker punch. Is he saying splice is the other uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rick Danford says, I really enjoyed Hollow Man, and I thought this is what an Invisible Man monster movie should be. There's elements of it that I agree with. Travis Legler says, Verhoeven could always make my stomach turn. I saw both RoboCop and Starship Troopers at least five years before I should have. Then he and Kevin Bacon made this dark and interesting movie together. Seeing Bacon become a sexual predator and then a rapist kind of fucked me up. Very interested (laughs) in what you all think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not a movie for the kids, that's no. for sure. I was just thinking about how young I was when I watched Showgirls. Yeah. I really should not have <laughs> yeah. watched that. I, th- I feel like... I'm, Is that I a Verhoeven like, right of passage? I feel like no matter yeah. what age you are, you are too young to watch Showgirls. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. probably. It feels <laughs> like it. Nobody's old enough. Nobody's ready. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Constantine. And oh, about yeah. that movie, Steve Carney writes in and says, Constantine is one of the most forgettable, bland, uninteresting films I've ever seen. I'm surprised I didn't turn it off. Damn. Something about Keanu smoking all those cigarettes makes me sad. I think my <laughs> urge to protect him at all costs just oh. kicked in. Uh, well, oh, there you go. Right. Again, there's sense. the love for yeah. Keanu Aww. for some yeah. reason. Uh, Dom Cree says he loves the lung tar cleansing punishment yes. in yeah, the movie. Yeah. We do too. It's pretty great. Uh, Michael Whitaker, the Constantine expert, writes in oh. to, this is probably notes that we should have included on last week's show. He says it should be noted that John Constantine is first and foremost a street level sorcerer, uh, which is why they never explain what he's really doing with the cat or Angela. These were technically magic spells that he was performing, not sending her to hell. The comics are strictly, are, are not strictly Christian centered either and follow mythology and magic from all forms of beliefs and faith also chaz from the comics is uh chaz chandler he's john constantine's oldest and most alive friend as friends dying help constantine is also from the comics and also serves as his driver and sidekick and finally the lucifer tv series is in fact also based on a neil gaiman character oh yeah oh wow that's true right i forgot about that and he, uh, Constantine, crosses over into those. I think Constantine has been in the Sandman. Wow. Um, yeah. Comics. Okay. Thank yeah. you for wow. that. Lucifer is so Thank relevant. We had no idea. Well, there you go. Appreciate it. Damn. Um, Pat Hetfield says, I had no idea Constantine TV show even existed. I'm mm-hmm. not that much of a fan, but I suppose I'll look into it eventually to see what it's like. Also, I, he- I heard that Constantine 2 is indeed on the way. Okay, so that, Pat, is not like an official, that's, I think, a fan hopeful, mm-hmm. and I think Keanu Reeves has said, yeah, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll, that's all they need, is like, Keanu Reeves is saying, like, yeah, I'm interested for them to be like, ah, it's in production, it's, it's yeah. in the development. Yeah, it's there's like, yeah, fake yeah, trailers not... and all sorts of stuff out yeah. there, I looked it up. And, oh yeah, you uh, gotta be careful, don't get, uh, don't look at anything mm-hmm. on Facebook, they're lying. 
Um, the week before, we watched a movie called Final Destination 2. Yojimbo Ice says, at the time, this sure seemed like the best of the series. I didn't like three, and I disliked four. And although five was fresh to an extent with a great ending, it didn't exactly leave me wanting more. I can see how, in retrospect, this one is half-baked in a lot of ways, but it did balance the scares with the fun in a lot of ways that future installments struggled to meet. Yeah, it definitely has the weakest story of any of the movies, probably. Which one? The second one, because it's so dependent on the first one. Very true. Yeah. Uh, But again, uh, the trauma still alive today. I sent to to my friends here uh, uh, just this week about someone following a truck. Yep. The head logs on it. It was just. It was just like I've seen the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just waiting. You don't even have to say what the movie is anymore. You say I've seen the movie. But I love this guy's vibe because he was just like, "Take me home. I'm ready." He's like, "I'm ready for it. Whatever." about to happen i am here for yeah. it i've seen the movie i'm ready to go oh, amazing funny. 20 years that has <laughs> yeah. ripped our sight as everybody yeah. knows final destination 2 well we were talking about like uh we had asked on social media this is why you got to get over on our social media Please because do. we ask interactive questions here and we put it to you what was the best inciting incident incident of the uh, final destination mm-hmm. series and oh. uh you know the logging scene on the highway uh, according to Mike Miller, it says it's hard to beat the highway mayhem, but the roller coaster is a close second. It's a good one. The roller coaster one was fun. It's a good one. And uh, Aaron Don Gilmer says that the highway, the same scene from the highway, uh, you know, like the, I think mm-hmm. it's the log going through the car, also shows up in Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. That's which we have right. also covered. Oh, I tried yeah. to forget. Yes. Talk about that. I yes. about that. I tried to forget that movie because yeah. it was so much milk and. What? <laughs> it was a lot. Remember, of he was drinking so full milk. glasses of milk oh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much milk. Uh, we're liking that uh, one, but yeah, uh, the, the uh, parents uh, right at the very beginning of that movie. Yeah, was they like, do. Holy they get, fuck! Yeah, yeah the fi- they, they get, get Final it. Destination. I think it was yeah. more graphic than yeah. Final Destination. Yeah. Oh, thank Actually, you for the reminder. Yes. Thank yeah. you for the reminder on that. Yeah, yeah. we forget Tyrell's our movies. Just yeah. Everyone yeah. drink milk. I forget everything I watch. I know. We will remind you. Yep. Um, and, now, and it's recorded, so you can go back yep. and listen to those episodes and more in our back catalog. No, we're going to go Or you around. can purchase Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker on 4K, because who knew they do that? <laughs> I know. Along with Kathy's <laughs> Curse. 4K yeah. version yeah. of it. Like, yeah. what, a, what, a world, what a world we live in. Thank I you. I feel like we contributed to that. Yeah, I, I think I, I so, feel, too. Oh, yeah, we're keeping it alive. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of it. Well, um, now we're going to go around the table and we're going to review tonight's movie, starting with... Colin! Oh, shit. Colin goes first. What did you think about Hollow Man? I was surprised, actually. Um, so I have seen the movie twice before. I saw it in the theater and I saw it on home video at some point. And both times uh, I came away with a... Um, I don't know. I just... I didn't like it when I saw it in the theater. Okay. Uh, and so how many years ago is that now? Mm-hmm. 24. 25, 24 mm-hmm. years. Um, and I was trying tonight, I was trying to sit there because I was actually enjoying the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting there going like, oh, I get it. Like, you know, it's a movie about this guy and like becoming or I guess he is a sexual predator that's kind of like absol- he absolving himself of like more morality, you know, because mm-hmm. he's invisible. His morality Goes because he's invisible. invisible because of what he thinks he's going to offer to the world doing this experiment. I mean, there's you know because even like the 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 first act does seem to be this escalation of um, sexual attacks that's intercut with like, and then we got science to explain like how <laughs> we're gonna actually do this, and then it's like okay now. You know, after the rape, it's like now we have to kill the monster for the mm-hmm. the second half of the movie. You know. Um, and I was kind of digging it. I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I guess this time I got the vibe. I got the movie that I think Verhoeven was trying to make where I think I missed that the last, mm-hmm. uh-huh. I guess. But the last couple that. times I that I saw that. it, yeah. it, it, I was, it, I guess there was, you know, now I'm trying to analyze like why I didn't like it. And I guess there was a distaste for the movie before. Mm-hmm. that now I'm kind of like, oh, well, okay, all of this is intentional, and I get right. I Now get you know what, what it is. Now you're not <laughs> yeah. expecting mm-hmm. anything. Maybe maybe you're not expecting anything good mm-hmm. from the character as far as, as goodness and everything. Yeah, and so maybe like, that was it. I'm wondering so if you're like, looking at me like, all right, so you're just bad from the beginning, and we'll yeah. go from there. I wonder, like, that couldn't have been, like, I couldn't be completely blind to that, but I mean, I guess you think, like, and I think it was those 
Lines. But we're trained to expect a redemption arc. You know what I'm saying? Your brain is trained to expect, okay, okay this guy's bad now, but his arc is going to be redeeming right. himself. So when he doesn't, I could see why you'd be like, I don't like this because I'm not used to seeing this. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, if nothing else, we're humans. Yeah. We have, uh, yeah. we, you would hope we have hope. Right. There so was, you help the characters. Just yeah, like, but is he just I, bad? No, you know, because when they were saying it, the the two lines that that you pointed out mm-hmm. that you know like well you know the the monkey went crazy because of the serum mm-hmm. and you know the the he goes crazy he might you know be going crazy and I remember the original Invisible Man it was like a guy who went crazy because of the serum right and so then I think I latched onto that more and didn't really feel it and now it's like well that was an afterthought you know. That was never really intended anyway. He was just a bad guy who got worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, and he's a monster the whole way through, and he is the invisible man. I thought the visual effects were um jaw dropping, like I said before. Outstanding. Uh Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff, who yep. we've talked about before, because they've done a lot of uh practical work. They did the practical stuff, and I don't I'm sorry, I don't remember who did the uh was in charge of the, the the actual visual effects who lost out to gladiator now it seems like uh wow uh, yeah. an oversight yeah um this is kind of impressive from that point of view i think um in the second half when it becomes more like a rote kind of slasher movie they're still making it visually cool i like the science face off you know and a montage i thought that was like all right this is you know kind of interesting and then uh the overblown elevator stuff i could have lived without but o- otherwise i'm gonna say that i would recommend the hollow man uh i was kind of uh impressed this time around holly what did you think uh, yeah i i don't i don't entirely disagree with what you're saying i'm i'm kind of with you where this watch it's not as bad as i remembered um i think i built it up in my head and i think you're <laughs> onto something with like now that we know what it's supposed to be yes it's easier to watch it and it's easier to understand it um that doesn't mean it's good it does not mean it's good <laughs> and there's still way too much rape for my taste and there's still too much dog cruelty and animal cruelty for my taste um, both of those things put me dog. off very much um <laughs> It, the writing is absolutely horrendous. There's so many lines in this movie that I was just like, they're they're just written so badly that it does not matter how the, the actors said them yeah. or portrayed them. It was just going to be bad. <laughs> and I think the the direction is specific and it's what he wants, but it's not good. And yeah, there's just there's a lot with this that I don't like. I did enjoy parts of it more than I thought I was going to. Um, I, I think the effects are seriously impressive. Um, still, they, I mean, obviously we've come so far that the, if our movie were to come out with these effects right now, I'd be like, oh, that looks terrible. But looking at 2000, it looks really good. It's kind of crazy for 2000. Right. Like, it's really good. Um, yeah, I'm still not going to recommend it. Cause it's <laughs> just, a, it's a bad movie and it's, Ugh. yeah I don't, I don't think his movies are for me necessarily um that's fair yeah <laughs> that's fair i don't think i mean i i enjoy i enjoy some aspects but it's just not my tastes i like some sleaze i don't like his sleaze if that makes sense yeah oh yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah. there's different yeah. different flavors of sleaze yeah. is maybe just yeah, taste that <laughs> Different flavors of sleaze. <laughs> what is your what is your of flavor sleaze. of sleaze that you like, Taste Holly? Taste that. Leave it like a, I like a John Waters sleaze. Okay. I would say I would prefer a John Waters sleaze to this. Interesting. It depends. Oh, interesting. It because yeah. I'd be like, well, uh, that's a little too much. Well, yeah, d- it depends too. But, I mean, yeah, but like, like yeah. crybaby sleaze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> okay like yeah, that. yeah, uh, yeah. The, I'm I'm gonna pass on Hollow Man, although not as bad as I remembered. Michaela, what did you think? I consider that a victory. Uh, (laughs) You should not watch it, but not as bad. Yes. You know, I've always hated this movie, but I did feel myself soften a little bit on it today. And I think it's just because I know the parts I'm not going to like. and Because that's all I remember from this movie is is all the sexual assault stuff. Because it's so prominent and it's such a big part of this movie. And there really is 
no point to it other than exploitation. And I mean, we get this guy's bad. You don't need to beat us over the head with it by showing him assault mm-hmm. every single person he knows. Um, and he starts assaulting the camera guy who's in the movie. Seriously. Just, it's like, what's going is on? It, is it the point of the movie? That, <laughs> that, yeah. He's, he, I mean, like as a, a movie monster, right? Mm-hmm. They've come up with like a pretty, like, yeah, he's a, it's a monster. It's a, he's a monster. Yeah. But it just doesn't feel like there's any like redemption for that yeah. specific part of his, you know, brain of terror. You know, that lady still got raped by an invisible person knows has no idea what the fuck happened. And yeah. that's just her yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like there's still like nothing gets undone in this movie. So um but yeah, I did feel myself soften a little bit and I was able to just kind of truly appreciate the transformation scenes and on this watch, mm-hmm. um, which I had never really paid to before because when especially the first time you see it, it's a lot of sexual assault to take in in a short amount of time so it's hard to process that and pay attention to what's happening at the same time and quickly like the the fact that the character goes to it so quickly right Mm -hmm. exactly well he i mean the first scene we see him in his apartment he's pissed off that he can't creep on his neighbor anymore it's like from the jump yeah he's always been a predator Yeah. yeah um uh and i like man the effects are really good and hold up really really well and i do think kevin bacon is perfect for this role like absolutely perfect yeah. like nailed it 100 really percent sleazy yeah and um we're looking at you maxine we're, we're <laughs> yeah, ready can't wait yeah. can't what was wait. that one where he played the child molester you the, the woods? woodsman yeah or was it the, uh, oh, it's either the woods or the woods yeah, yeah it's yeah. fucking yeah i mean mm-hmm. he's good right but yeah i guess yeah. we could just say he's a good actor yeah. he's a good yeah. actor yeah, yeah but i th- i think there that wasn't sleepers I was like, wasn't he in yeah. Sleepers? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he, um, yeah, I think he does great in this. And I love like the amount of care and detail put into the effects. But I wish that care and detail carried over into any part of the story. Because this movie just doesn't have anything, any perspective to offer that hasn't already been explored by an Invisible Man property. Like, it's not, I don't know. I guess the only thing they're trying to do better is the technology part of it right mm-hmm. they, they care more about that than the story but it's just there's there's no arc for your main character he's just a piece of shit he starts off a piece of shit and he ends a piece of shit and it's like that's not yeah, the most our, interesting other characters don't really change or go through no. much by the time they get to the end either they don't have right. any realizations yeah. no a it's lot of them die yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they do change um, <laughs> and i do just find mrs. the leads mrs leads change do you understand <laughs> i just find the overall tone of this movie to just be like really I don't, it's, uh, I don't like this type of sleaze. I agree. This is not, yeah, it's just, it's a reprehensible movie and it just doesn't, nothing about it makes you feel good. It's just, it's a mean spirited movie and I don't care for its tone. I need some balance to my sleaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It needs some tone adjustments because this is just not enjoyable for me so i'm gonna pass on it sean i need someone to be having a good time right, right. Uh, right. I, think, I think that's the big thing i think that's what i mean a good points all around from everybody here tonight mm-hmm. i think that might be the big thing it's just like we get no we, we're pretty much like just the bad a bad guy from start to finish it's a sleaze from start to finish. there's no uh there needs to be more levity more moments of something we like about these mm-hmm. characters i think i don't think we get many of those moments with uh, any of them. I think we understand a few of them, but we don't. I'm really... rooting for all the animals to escape and kill these I people. Mean, that like, might, that yeah, might be like yeah. the gorilla is the one. Yeah. I'm just like, I like the gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> everyone else, fuck off. Yeah. Um, and I think because, yeah, everyone is kind of just not. Yeah, I, yeah, you don't like mm-hmm. anybody in this movie. So that I think that is uh, a detractor for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a lot around it that is still really good. Um, like Again, like we all said, the effects. Wow. Uh, Mm -hmm. Still, still good. 24 years later. Great for 2000. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to recommend the movie, too. I think you got to go into it knowing that you just have a monster at the beginning of this movie and you will watch a monster Mm -hmm. for the entirety of the movie. And characters script wise and character wise, this is not this movie's strongest suit. There's a lot of, I think, other things that are good. You do establish a monster who does end up getting killed at the end of it. Um, Yeah, I'll still recommend it. I think there's there's. Uh, uh, you know, effects wise and uh, a few other things. There's, yeah, there's still something in this movie. Again, just know that you're getting monsters in this movie <laughs> and you may not feel great about it from start to finish, but yeah, there's still some very interesting stuff there. So yeah, I recommend Hollow Man. There it is. All right. Split vote on Hollow Man. I'm not going to celebrate Hollow Man, yeah. but yeah, I'll recommend it. You should watch it. Uh, did we just establish? Was it the last Jerry Goldsmith score? It's it's toward the end. Oh yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know a, when he... If wait, hold on. If there's two people in Hollow Men too, why is it not just called Hollow Men? 
That's a dun, great dun, dun. question. Uh, Good Peter Cushing oh, I guess we'll have to bring it and watch it. Oh, Peter <laughs> yeah. He's holding a camcorder in this still we're looking oh, at. No. Watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys ever, uh, you guys ever watch Home Improvement? He yeah, was yeah. he was in Home Improvement as a little annoying kid for uh, like really? a couple really? of years. Oh, yeah. Huh. oh yeah, he was. I did not know that. I, he was always the guy in Fast Lane. You remember from Miss G? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the once he was in Fast Lane. Yeah. Him, another guy, and Tiffany Amber Thiessen were in it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Fast Lane. I mean, my first introduction to him was Can't Hardly Wait. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah. Before he became Trip, Twilight Trip Man, Trip McNeely. Trip McNeely. <laughs> that was the Jerry O'Connell's that was Trip Jerry McNeely. Yeah, character, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, but he's, he's like fucking Trip McNeely, Trip man. Trip McNeely. Yeah. <laughs> God, I fucking we're, love that movie. We're flip flops in the shower. We're I got warts yeah, all, all over my feet. <laughs> all over my... God, I love that so movie. good. God, Jerry and O'Connell. And then obviously Dr. Cullen. From yes, Twilight. Right. of course, there you of go. course, of course. Obviously. So the question is: Are we watching Hollow Men two next week? It's going to be up to. Holly, mm. well, what are we gonna watch? Ho- Holly, Hollow Men. To- no, I won't. Ho- uh, Holly no. Men. What are we watching next? Well, now week? we're gonna watch Twilight. I'm just yeah, oh, I'm just God. kidding. I'm just kidding. We're gonna watch a movie that Michaela and I have both talked about back and forth for a while now. We're gonna watch To Die For. Gus Van Sant. Oh, the Gus Van Sant. Okay. Not okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Not the uh, based on the Pamela Smart case. Yeah. yeah. Nicole Kidman, Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix. Okay, mm-hmm. I think yeah. I've seen probably a few sh- scenes of this movie. Uh, gotcha. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. You said. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. What well, year? What year? Ninety-five. Okay. Com- coming to Criterion soon. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. your opportunity to get in four K probably, mm-hmm. but all right, most likely to die for next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>